Hey, it's Drybear. We're continuing a series of covering every single weapon in the first Descendant, and today we're gonna to talk about all of the best uses for beam rifles. First, I think if you have a door that you're trying to keep ajar or held open, you can use any of the beam rifles to kind of prop that door open so you don't have to hold it open. Or if you have a table around the house that's a little bit wobbly, like one of the legs is too short for the others, you might be able to put a beam rifle underneath the table leg to balance out the table so it doesn't wobble as much. No, but all in seriousness, these are probably the weakest weakest weapons in the entire game. In fact, I think it's safe to call it at this point and say that the dimensional bridge is the worst weapon in the entire game. Even when you're able to scale up the charge level of all of the beam rifles, of course, this is the non-ultimate beam rifles, the damage on them is absolutely pitiful. This is the max out like simulated most possible damage these weapons can do, and they're doing pitiful, pitiful, pitiful amounts of damage. I don't know what they planned for the beam rifles in general, or if they, they wanted them to have like a higher uh, attack rate or have their attack rate scale up better uh, or at all with the beam charge or have crazy damage scaling at all. But in general, the stage amount, the amount of damage you get from going from stage one to stage two to stage three is very minimal. Their base stats are not great. And most of the beam rifles have almost no crit chance, almost no crit damage, and very little if no weak point scaling at all. They, there's nothing really special about them. And honestly, for most weapons, I generally uh, suggest kind of going with what you feel like, what you enjoy, what you like, like, like playing. But at this point, I would say you could look at any other weapon type in the entire game aside from the normal beam rifles, and you would be better off for it. Even handguns in many cases outperform all of these. And I think we have found the worst weapon in the game, the dimensional bridge, which sucks because it looks awesome. Like this is a very halo looking weapon. It's so cool. And I feel like they've put so much time and effort Effort into the glow and the aesthetic like these hard surf surface models are so beautiful and stunning they all have different effects and if you didn't notice about the beam rifles they all have different glows different effects and these glows show up in the ui so like the blue beam rifle has a blue ui that builds up when the beam goes the dogma has a super cool purple beam and you look at look at it it's like a little mouth when it opens and animates when you shoot it opens like the t-rex mouth and starts shooting as it builds up, the UI turns purple to match the beam color of it. Even the Burning 44, which by the way is a mess for recoil and accuracy, this thing goes all over the dang place. You have to control it. It's got an orange beam. It's got moving parts. It's got glowing effects. The, the beam charge on the UI turns orange. Like it's so cool, man. Like these weapons are so cool, but they're so bad. So I would definitely say that these weapons are due for a buff for some kind of increase because they definitely need it. They need something. You can honestly safely buff almost any stat on these weapons in a large way and it would be perfectly fine. They still would not be the best weapon in the game. There's no risk in doing so. So let's go through what the best build would be for the beam rifles if you wanted to use them or potentially if they end up doing some nice buffs for these weapons in the future and things change, maybe we'll have a build stored away for using up the beam rifles that really have some cool aesthetic and vibes to them that can just stand to have massive buffs applied so that they can come in line with some of the other weapons in the game. So again, keep in mind that most of the beam rifles have almost no crit rate to speak of. Their base crit damage, even if they do manage to crit, is very small at 150%, which I think is the floor for the game in general. They also have almost no weak point at base. Most of them are one weak point, so they have no inherent weak point scaling other than the flat floor for the game, no critical damage scaling other than the flat floor for the game and they have almost no crit rate burning i believe is the one that has a little bit more crit rate at 10 percent and a little bit more crit damage nope that's the same and that's the same so they just really don't have a lot to scale off of when it comes to value so your best bet is going to be reload rounds firearm attack elemental damage and scaling damage off of that you can run with some of the cheeky builds like the frigid the frigid burn build with chill enhancement does work on these but again keep in mind in order to hit chill and uh, frigid chill you have to be standing at 25 meters or more which is about the max range for most beam rifles you can see that at this distance i don't even hit the target i actually have to step closer in order to damage the target so just the perfect range at max range i can trigger frigid burn 
but that's about it. And they just don't scale as well as any of the other weapons in the game. Now, keep in mind, there's going to be some, uh, you know, some interesting things about how these weapons function. And they also have a unique mod that no other weapon in the game has, Super Conductivity Charge, which is pretty cool. So how do the beam rifles work? How would you use them? What is this UI I see on the right side of my screen? So you see a, uh, a radial, which shows your current charge value to stage up the weapon. Outside of that, there are these three hash marks, these little like uh, chunk segments, and that's, that signifies what stage the weapon is in. You're either in stage zero, stage one, stage two, or stage three. Every time you stage up, you get 10% more damage than the previous stage. So all it's doing is increasing the damage per hit. So you'll notice that as we start at the base value here, I stage up, the damage goes up, I stage up, the damage goes up, and I set it max, and I'm able to kind of pump that. So there are some interesting interactions, like you can do spray and pray, which gives you, it's basically the firing fiesta or the payout, but for special rifles. This allows you to kind of use that kind of free ammo. You can also have recycling, you can have maximum rounds and reload time in order to maintain the high beam, and running with things like superconductivity charge, while it doesn't directly give you a bunch of damage, it means that they, they, char they stage up faster. So you see how much faster I got to stage three this time, and you really want to stay in stage three for the whole magazine, which means having to stop fire, dodge, and do other things. It will have a uh, a depreciation rate, how much it decharges as it goes down. So you can see if I pepper this, it doesn't stage up right away. If I get to stage two and then I stop, it's going to downward charge until it gets down to the bottom stage. You never want that to happen for beam rifles. You want to stage up to stage three and keep it there. If you have to, you can kind of pepper it a little bit just to keep it at the max stage, but you want to make sure you're maintaining full stage as possible. And in the best build, I would say that it's still worth running super conductivity charge because it gives you a little bit more ramp up time in the beginning, especially for the charge rifles, or the beam rifles that have lower maximum rounds. The rounds and the fire rate will change how fast you can get to max charge and how long you can stay there the calculation is similar to mental focus you want to get to the max value and then have extra rounds on top so you can keep shooting that beam and keep getting in value out of your charge three state which is super cool um, they also scale insanely well with uh with sharp precision shot it allows you to get fire rate and firearm attack you're all like sharp precision shot is almost as good as a fully stacked real life fighter which should put things in perspective because realistically it's not very often Often, depending on the weapon type, you'll be able to fully stack real life fighter. So sharp precision shot being a weighting average of 91% here without all the requirements of real life fighter just puts it leagues above real life fighter in so many ways. So sharp precision shot, best in slot for this. You can still run sweeping squad and elemental conductor. And honestly, I really hope they make spray and pray, firing fiesta and payout, just not the same mod grouping as these other damage versions. It's not a big damage increase. I feel like it would be a nice companion mod for some of the other ultimate mods. I know they want you to have one yellow mod per weapon, but it feels like choosing between like real life fighter, sharp precision shot, or mental focus, and things like spray and pray or spreading frostbite to targets without any damage increase is just such a dumb no-brainer choice that it ends up making those other mods largely useless because you can't you'd have to take such a big dps loss to run it but for the the best build here beam charge rate isn't your best stat it actually i think falls behind reload and rounds because you still will be able to get up to the max charge rate it just gets you there a little bit faster which saves you some rounds but Technically, if you had be higher beam charge rate and it saved you five rounds of not max charge damage, but then you could add five rounds with the round count, it ends up being a little bit better because it allows you to limit your reload deduction on that. So reloaded rounds, good. Weak point is your best stat because crit damage and crit chance are garbanzo. Uh, firearm attack, elemental damage the from firearm attack, which is your elemental enhancement mods, and then fire rate goes well. And then if you have to, you can put crit chance and crit damage on these weapons. They're better on burning 44 because it has a little bit of crit chance uh 10 which is decent enough but not enough crit damage to really write home about which is kind of rough they also for some reason the flat scaling on these when you do weapon adjustment is not super great either so like bonus first attack which is like bonus first colossi bonus first the three factions generally we see bonus first attack on the reroll priority closer to 20 or 30 percent waiting and that just shows you that obviously it's, it should be much better than firearm attack as a reroll stat 
that because firearm attack is always on, right? You wouldn't want the conditional flat firearm attack to be equal to the non-conditional flat firearm attack because one is conditional, one isn't. So it makes sense that the one where you're choosing between Colossi and three different factions is so much better than the other one because it's not on all the time. If you have bonus versus Colossi and you shoot a normal enemy, you're not gonna get that bonus. So it should be higher when it's active and then it turns off and has no value, right? So this being so low, I think is kind of a crime uh, for, for special weapons. In this case, I think they can honestly stand to buff every aspect of beam rifles, but I wanted to at least cover it, uh, test it, do all that kind of stuff with it. I, I think they're super cool weapons. Like I really, really like, um, I really like these weapons. I think they're really fun. They're super visual and, and stunning. And I think that if they can get them a buff in the future or in the near future, it gives you a lot to, to really play along with. Um, they can they can supercharge the fire rate. They can supercharge the firearm attack. They can give them crit damage that's worth a damn. Uh, they can give them weak point scaling, especially with some of these. Like again, if you run with uh, Burning 44, which has one of the worst recoil spreads in the game, like it's so bad. Look at this. This thing is like a mo This thing is a menace. It looks. This look. I'm. I'm just holding the button. This is ridiculous. You like almost if for this one specifically. It has crit chance on it, like 10% crit chance. But you're almost forced to one reduce recoil because it is just. It's all over the place, man. This thing is like wild. It's a monster of a weapon. It's cool though. I think it's neat. So that's the beam rifles. Uh, we're moving on to the ultimate weapons. This is actually the end of the uh, normal weapons. We have now covered all of the normal weapons in the game across the board. We just have these ultimate weapons left and then we're, we're there. And then we can do a final summary video going over all the weapons we've covered and all the weightings there. The spreadsheet's down below in the description as always if you wanted to use it. And of course the one sheet, the build sheet for this is down there as well if you'd like to use this for the beam rifles. See you in the next one. If you found value in today's video, leave a like down below. Leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video get seen by more people. And don't forget to check out my other channels for other content and other stuff and other things.